Hello children. Final story today from our book The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And we're going to read a story today called The Return of the Hero. I think you might be able to guess who it's about. The rat put out a paw, gripped Toad by the scruff of the neck and gave a great pull. Do you remember? He's in the river at the moment and he's just gone past Water Rat's house and he's hoping that Water Rat's going to be able to help him out. Well, he obviously is. The waterlogged Toad came up slowly but surely. At last he stood in the hall, streaked with mud and weed, but happy and high-spirited as of old. Oh, ratty, he cried, I've been through such times since I saw you last. Such trials and sufferings. Oh, such escapes, such disguises. Oh, I am a smart toad and no mistake. Toad, said the water rat firmly, go upstairs at once, take off that old cotton rag and clean yourself up. Put on some of my clothes and try and come down looking like a gentleman if you can. Far rather than that shabby bedraggled object that you are and I don't want to set eyes upon. Now stop swaggering and arguing and be off. By the time the toad came down again, lunch was on the table. While they ate, Toad told the rat all his adventures, dwelling chiefly on his own cleverness and cunning. But the more he talked and boasted, the more grave and silent the rat became. Can you see them having lunch? At last the rat said, Toady, don't you see what an awful ass you've been making of yourself? On your own admission, you have been imprisoned, chased, insulted, jeered at and flung in the water. All before, you must go and steal a motor car. When are you going to be sensible and try and be a credit to your friends? Toad heaved a deep sigh and said very nicely and humbly, quite right ratty i've been a conceited old ass but now i'm going to be a good toad and not do it any more we'll have our coffee and then i'm going to stroll down to toad hall i've had enough adventures strolled stroll down to toad hall cried the rat do you mean to say you haven't heard about the stoats and weasels the wild wooders cried toad trembling in every limb what have they been doing Oh, and how they've been and taken Toad Hall, continued the rat. Toad leaned his chin on his paws and a tear welled up in each of his eyes and splashed on the table. Plop, plop, plop. Go on, ratty, tell me all, he murmured. When you got into trouble, said the rat, it was a good deal talked about. The river bankers stuck up for you, but the wild wood animals got very cocky and went about saying you would never come back again. But Mole and Badger stuck out, through thick and thin, that you would come back again somehow. They arranged to move into Toad Hall and have it ready for you when you turned up. They didn't guess what was going to happen, of course. One dark night, a band of weasels, armed to the teeth, crept up to the front entrance. A body of desperate ferrets possessed themselves of the backyard and a company of skirmishing stoats occupied the conservatory. Mole and Badger were sitting by the fire, suspecting nothing, when those villains rushed in from every side. They beat them with sticks and turned them out into the cold and wet, and the wild wooders had been living in Toad Hall ever since. And going on simply anyhow, eating your grub, drinking your drink, and singing vulgar songs and telling everybody that they've come to stay for good. Oh, have they, said Toes, Toad seizing a stick. I'll soon see about that. It's no good, Toad, called the rat. You'll only get into trouble. But there was no holding him. He marched down the road, his stick over his shoulder, till he got near his front gate. Suddenly, there pop popped up a long yellow ferret with a gun. Can you see? Who comes there? said the ferret sharply. Stuff and nonsense, said the toad very angrily. The ferret brought his gun up to his shoulder. Toad dropped flat in the road and bang! A bullet whistled over his head. As toad scampered off down the road, he heard the ferret laughing. What did I tell you? said the rat. They are all armed. You must just wait. Still, Toad was not inclined to give in at once. So he got out the boat and set off up the river to where the garden of Toad Hall came down to the waterside. 
all seemed very peaceful and deserted. Very warily, he paddled up to the mouth of the creek and was just passing under the bridge when... Crash! Oh, dear. A great stone smashed through the bottom of the boat. It filled and sank, and Toad found himself struggling in deep water. Looking up, he saw two stoats leaning over the bridge, watching him with glee. The indignant toad swam to shore, and while the stoats laughed and laughed, Toad retraced his weary way on foot. Well, what did I tell you, said the rat crossly, and look, you've lost my boat and ruined that nice suit that I lent you. Now sit down and have your supper and be patient. We can do nothing until we have seen the mole and the badger and heard their latest news. Those poor animals have been camping out, keeping a constant eye on the stoats and weasels and planning how to get your property back for you. You don't deserve to have such loyal friends, Toad. You really don't. They had just finished their meal when there, was a, there came a knock at the door. And in walked Mr Badger, looking very rough and tussled and the mole very shabby and unwashed. Hooray! Here's old Toad, cried the mole. Why, you must have managed to escape, you clever Toad. Don't egg him on, Mole, said the rat. You know what he's like. But please tell us, what is the position and what's best to be done? The position's about as bad as it can be, replied the Mole. It's quite useless to think of attacking the place, said the Badger. They're too strong for us. Then it's all over, sobbed the Toad. I shall never, never see my dear Toad Hall any more. Cheer up, Toady, said the Badger. I'm going to tell you a secret. Toad dried his eyes. Had an Secrets had an immense attraction for him because he could never keep one. Here they are. Can you see them? Having a little chat. There is an underground passage, said the badger, that leads from the river bank right up into Toad Hall. Oh, nonsense, badger, said Toad. I know every inch of Toad Hall. Nothing of the sort, I assure you. My young friend, said the badger with great severity, your father, who was a worthy animal, discovered that the passage, and he discovered that passage and he showed it to me. Don't let my son know about it, he said. He's a good boy, but simply cannot hold his tongue. If he's ever in a real fix, you may tell him about it, but not before. Now, there's going to be a big banquet tomorrow and all the weasels will be in the dining room eating and drinking and suspecting nothing. No guns, no swords, no arms, whatever. They will trust entirely to their excellent sentinels, their soldiers. Now, that tunnel leads right up in under the pantry, next to the dining hall. We shall creep out into the pantry, cried the mole, and rush in upon them, said the badger. And whack em and whack em and whack em, cried the toad. Very well, said the badger. Our plan is settled. We will make all the necessary arrangements tomorrow morning. When Toad got down next morning, he found Badger reading the paper and Rat running around the room, distributing weapons in four little heaps on the floor. Presently, the mole came tumbling in, very pleased with himself. I've been getting a rise out of the stoats, he said. I put on Toad's old washerwoman dress and off I went to Toad Hall. The sentries were on the lookout, of course, with their guns. The sergeant in charge said, run away, my good woman, run away. It won't be me that'll be running away, said I, in a short time from now. A hundred bloodthirsty badgers are going to attack Toad Hall this very night. Six boatloads of rats will come up the river while a picked body of toads will storm the orchard. There won't be much left of you unless you clear out while you have the chance. They were all as flustered as could be. That's just like the weasels. They have fun while we are cut to pieces by bloodthirsty badgers. Oh, moly, how could you, said the rat. You've spoiled everything, cried Toad. Mole, said the badger. I see you have more sense in your little finger than some have in the whole of their bodies. Oh, good mole, actually. Clever mole. Toad was simply wild with jealousy, especially as he couldn't make out for the life of him what mole had done that was so clever. Can you? When it began to grow dark, the rat proceeded to dress them up for the expedition. There was a belt for each animal and then a sword, a cutlass, a pair of pistols, a truncheon, several sets of handcuffs, bandages and sticking plaster and a flask 
and a sandwich case. The badger laughed and said, all right, Ratty, but I'm going to do all I've got to do with this here stick. But the rat only said, please, Badger, I shouldn't like you to say I had forgotten anything. Badger led them along the river for a little way and then suddenly swung himself over the edge into a hole in the river bank. They were in the secret passage. It was cold and dark and damp and low and narrow. They shuffled along till at last they heard, apparently over their heads, people shouting and cheering and stamping on the floor. What a time they're having, said the badger. Come on! They hurried along the passage till they found themselves under a trap door. They heaved it back and then found themselves standing in the pantry with only a door between them and their enemies. The pantry's the kitchen. The noise was deafening. A voice could be made out saying, I should like to say one word about our kind host, Mr Toad. And then huge laughter. Good Toad, modest Toad. Shrieks of merriment. Just let me get at him, muttered Toad, grinding his teeth. Let me sing you a little song, went on the voice, which I have composed on the subject of Toad. The badger drew himself up, took a firm grip of his stick and cried, The hour is come, follow me, and flung the door wide open. <gasps> My, what a squealing and squeaking and screeching filled the air. Can you see him? He's just gone in. A bit cross. The mighty badger, his whiskers bristling, mole black and grim, rat desperate and determined, toad frenzied with excitement, emitting toad whoops that chilled them to the narrow. They were but four in all, but to the panic-stricken weasels the hall seemed full of monstrous animals, whooping and flourishing enormous cudgels, and they fled with squeals of terror. <gasps> Through the windows, up the chimney they went, anywhere to get out of reach of those terrible sticks. Up and down the hall strode the four friends, whacking with their sticks at every head that showed itself, and in five minutes the room was clear. The badger, resting from his labours, leant on his stick and wiped his honest brow. Mole, he said, you're the best of fellows. Just cut along outside and see what those stoked sentries of yours are doing. I've an idea that thanks to you, we shan't have much trouble from them tonight. The mole vanished promptly through a window and the badger bade the other two see if they could find materials for some supper. I want some grub, he said, in that rather common way he had of speaking. They were just about to sit down with the, when the mole clambered through the window, chuckling with an armful of rifles. It's all over, he reported, as soon as the stoats, who were very jumpy already, heard the uproar inside the hall. They threw down their rifles and fled. So that's all right. Excellent and deserving animal, said the badger. So they finished their supper in great joy and contentment and presently retired to rest, safe in Toad's home, won back by matchless valour and a proper handling of sticks. The following morning, the badger remarked, I'm sorry, Toad, but there's a heavy morning's work in front of you. You see, we really ought to have a banquet to celebrate. It's expected of you. Invitations need to be written and you need to write them. What? cried the Toad. Me stop indoors and write a lot of rotten letters on a jolly morning like this? No, certainly not. OK, Badger, it'll be done. Toad hurried to the writing table. A fine idea had occurred to him. He would write the invitations and he would give a programme of entertainment for the evening with speeches and songs by Toad. The idea pleased him mightily and he worked very hard and got all the letters, letters finished by noon. A small weasel hurried off to deliver them. But when the other animals came back to lunch, the rat caught Toad by the arm. Now look here, Toad, he said. It's about this banquet. I am very sorry, but we want you to understand that there are going to be no speeches and no songs. Toad saw that he was trapped. They understood him. They saw through him. His pleasant dream was shattered. Mayn't I sing them just one? little song he said nope not one said rat through his though his heart bled as he noticed the trembling look of the poor disappointed toad it's for your own good toady you know your songs and speeches are all boasting and vanity 
You must turn over a new leaf sooner, not later. Toady remained a long while plunged in thought. At last, he raised his head. You have conquered my friends he said in broken accents it was a small thing that i asked however you are right and henceforth i will be a very different toad but oh dear this is a hard world he left the room with faltering steps i feel like a brute said the rat i know said the badger but would you have him jeered at by the stoats and weasels of course not said the rat and talking of weasels, it's lucky we came upon that little weasel and confiscated Toad's invitations. I had a look at one or two, and they were simply disgraceful. Mole is filling up plain, simple invitation cards. At last, the hour for the banquet drew near, and Toad was still sitting there, melancholy and thoughtful. His brow resting on his paw, he pondered long and deeply. Gradually, he began to smile. Then he took to giggling. At last he got up, locked the door, drew the curtains, arranged all the chairs in a semicircle and took up his position in front of them, swelling visibly. Then he bowed, <coughs> coughed twice and sang to the enraptured audience that his imagination so clearly saw. Toad's last little song. The toad came home. <coughs> there was panic in the parlour and howling in the hall. There was crying in the cowshed and shrieking in the stall when the toad came home. When the toad came home, there was smashing in of window and crashing in of door. There was chivying of weasels that fainted on the floor when the toad came home. Bang go the drums. The trumpeters are tooting and the soldiers are saluting and the cannon they are shooting and the motor cars are hooting as the hero comes home shout hooray and let each one of the crowd try and shout it very loud in honor of an animal of whom you're justly proud for it's toad's great day can you see him look at him singing away about himself he sang this very loud with great unction and expression. And when he had done, he sang it all over again. Then he heaved a deep sigh and went quietly down to his guests. The animals cheered when he entered and crowded round to say nice, thing, nice things about his courage and his fighting. But Toad only smiled faintly and murmured, not at all, on the contrary. Badgers was the mastermind. The mole and the water rat bore the brunt of the fighting. I merely served in the ranks and did little or nothing. The animals were puzzled by this unexpected attitude of his and Toad felt as if he had made his modest responses that he was an object of absorbing interest to everyone. At intervals, he stole a glance at Badger and the Rat, staring at each other and with their mouths open and this gave him the greater satisfaction. When later there were cries of Toad! Speech! Song! Toad only shook his head and raised a paw in mild protest. He was indeed an altered toad. After this climax, the four animals continued to lead their lives in great contentment. Sometimes in the course of a long summer evening, the friends would stroll together in the wild wood, which was now tamed, and it was pleasing to see how respectfully they were greeted by the inhabitants, and how the mother weasels would say to their young ones, Look, baby, there goes the great Mr. Toad, and that's the gallant water rat with the famous Mr. Mole. But when their infants were fractious, they would quiet them by telling them if they didn't hush, the terrible grey badger would up and get them. This was a base libel on Badger, who was rather fond of children, but it never failed to have its full effect. Can you see that picture of Mole and Ratty? with their night clothes on, ready for bed. I think it's probably time for your bed quite soon. I'll see you tomorrow for a new story, which I'll hope you'll enjoy. I hope you sleep really well, and I'll see you tomorrow. Night-night.